guys welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel um so today i thought i'd sit down with you i am literally nine months pregnant at this point with our second daughter and um so i a couple of days ago i you know did my last minute stuff for prepping and one of which was to write my birth plan so i thought i was thinking about people who always have questions about birth plans and questions about the hospital and things like that so i thought today i'd do a quick video on how to write a birth plan, what you should include in my, your birth plan. I'm not going to read you guys my entire birth plan or anything, but I'm just going to give tips and tricks and I might share a little bit of like how I wrote mine. I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit off. I think it's going to start raining soon. Um, I'll try to adjust that in editing, but we'll see how it goes. Also, I was going to like print out my birth plan and just have it in case I wanted to share any parts of it with you, but my printer is acting up and I couldn't figure it out, so I have my laptop, so if I'm looking down, just to check something that's why so let me just get that opened up and um yeah so birth plans why i like them is um so number one a birth plan you don't have to have a written out birth plan but i do find it like kind of good to write down your wants your needs your desires for labor and delivery especially if you have specific things that are important to you specific things that you want in your labor and delivery because it just it, to me it just gives you more control and control is very important when it's your body and you're birthing a child um for my first daughter i did write a birth plan um but i feel like it was harder the first time around because you don't exactly know what labor is like so you're not exactly sure what you want overall um my birth plan is relatively the same um, because I did have a good labor experience with my first daughter and so there are a lot of things that I wanted then that I still want now but there's a couple things that I didn't put on my first birth plan that after having the experience of going through labor and delivery I know that I want uh, if that makes sense so tip one is I know a lot of people look at templates when it comes to writing a birth plan like online and things like that and a lot of them are very complicated and your birth team does not have time and not going to want to read a 10 page birth plan so my thing is probably you can look at those templates just to see what people put on them but i would keep it very short and i wouldn't really write out like a paragraphed birth plan for my birth plan i literally did bullet points and it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I divided my birth plan into two separate sections. One is the labor and delivery and what the things that are important to me. And then one is postpartum. And so there's about nine bullet points for my labor and delivery. And then there's five for postpartum. Postpartum and postpartum care and things that I, I want and things like that. Um, so that's number one. I would just do bullet points of just what you, you know, how you want your labor to be and what you want. Again, also, the other thing, I chose to do this on my birth plan. I didn't see this on any other birth plans, but it's just a, I know the hospital already has my files and stuff like that. But I know that last time in my labor and delivery, because I had a written birth plan, the nurses kept it like in the room. And so I feel like it's more of an on-hand document. And so for me, I put my name, I put out my allergies because I do have a few medical allergies. So I put that in red on the top and I put my support person and our relationship and I put the baby's name because a lot of times when you are laboring, um, the nurses will ask you. I remember I didn't do that with my first daughter. I didn't put her name on the birth plan, but I did it this time because I realized that when I was laboring with Anna, specifically when I was pushing, um, they would they asked me what her name was and just having the nurses call the baby by the name just changed the atmosphere a little bit made it a little bit more real and kind of gave me that last push i needed um to really pull through those final moments in labor um it's just a short uh information stuff so i just did basically a text box on the top with just that information and then like i said all i did was bullet points i didn't do like paragraphs and paragraphs of this is what i want in labor um, I just did the most important things to me in labor and delivery and the most important things to me in postpartum and I just bullet pointed it. So I put labor, I put um, birth plan and then um, on the top, the first bullet point I would say put 
I would focus on what the most important thing in your labor is to you and what you want your laboring environment to be like. So for example, I wrote, the most important thing to me for my birth and the birth of my daughter are to be born safe and to be able to be heard during labor and that my daughter is born into a calm, positive environment. So that is the same for my first daughter and my second daughter. I really wanted to be present during labor and I still do. Um, I meditate during labor and I just like it to be a very calm environment. Because of that, the next bullet point is going to kind of build on that. So I said, to keep the laboring environment calm and positive, I will be meditating through my labor and I would like the lights to be kept dim and room to be kept calm. So the reason it's important, if you're going to be doing any type of hypnobirthing, meditation, um, special like labor um, exercises, either mental or physical, you want to let your labor and delivery team know. Um, you want to let them know like what's important to you during labor. Um, so that's why one of my first bullet points is to say that I will be meditating throughout my labor. Um, just so that they are aware that I don't want people like rushing in and things like that. I want things to be kept as calm as possible. Obviously in case of emergency, things need to change. But in general, I just say what I need. Um... And then also write something in there about pain management. If you're someone who knows you want an epidural right away, say that in your birth plan. Like, I plan to use an epidural. I would like an epidural given to me at, um, like, during, you know, immediately upon, um, what is it called? Admission. Um, for me, my plan for pain management is the same as my daughter. I would like to labor as long as possible without the epidural and let my body do its thing. And then when I abs if I absolutely get to a point where I can't handle pain or something like that, I'll get the epidural. With my first daughter, I did get the epidural, but I got it literally at, at the end. Um, and another reason I would put this in here, specifically if you're someone who's trying to labor without an epidural, is because of what happened to me with my first daughter. So I wanted, I was, I was trying to labor without the epidural. Like I said, I did get the epidural, but I got it when literally I was like eight centimeters. So for the majority of my labor, I got it like the last three hours of my labor, which is probably the most intense part. And I mostly got it not only for pain management, but also for maternal exhaustion so that I could sleep because I couldn't sleep through the pain. If you want the full story of my birth story and like my decision about the epidural and my experience, I'll link the whole story up below, but like up here on the card. But basically that's the reason I got it at the end of the day. But I still want to try again because every labor is different and now that I know what more to expect, I kind of feel like it, it might be different if I don't have maternal exhaustion and it also might be different because second labors are sometimes faster than the first ones and so if I'm, if I'm not in labor for 18 hours, I probably could handle the pain for, let's say if I'm in labor for like 10 hours instead or something like that. So we'll see. But I would like to be able to labor without the epidural until I request otherwise basically is what I'm saying and the reason I would definitely put that in my birth plan if that is also your plan is because with my first daughter they knew that I didn't really want the epidural that I was trying to labor without it but every time my contractions would get really intense and I would like be in pain the nurses would kind of ask me are you sure you don't want the epidural and like already being in pain and then being constantly asked about your pain was just kind of a little annoying so during my labor I actually requested that please don't ask me about the epidural anymore I will let you know if I change my mind and then when I did change my mind I did let them know but that was just me um, also if there's any interventions that you would like to avoid state that in your um, birth plan um, and movement I would talk about movement so if you're someone who wants a birthing ball if you're someone who wants to be allowed to walk around I would put that in my birth plan I would also put who you expect your support person to be I would put um, who that person is to you I would put um, who you want in the delivery room in general if you want any extra people for us me, my, uh, Sam and I choose to labor on our own we don't have any other people around us during that time um, but if you wanted like your partner and your mom or your sisters or your aunts or whoever um, I would put that all in my birth plan so that it's aware also if there's any visitors um, for us we don't do visitors in the hospital so we definitely put that in our birth plan 
but if you don't want visitors i would put that in my birth plan if you do want visitors but there's like a specific family member that you're like i don't want this person around and you think that they might try and you know be there you don't want to deal with the stress of that postpartum and with baby you are the mom and your partner is the other parents and your baby is a newborn and it's about you and your family you don't want to deal with any family drama if there is any there's always drama somewhere in the background or whatever you don't want to deal with that let the nurses deal with that so put it in your birth plan because if you put that you don't want a specific person to visit you during um, labor and delivery or, or postpartum or if you put that you don't want any visitors the nurses will take care of it care of it if someone shows up to the hospital you will not be the one to have to confront that situation in your time of postpartum the nurses will take care of it for you so just put it in your birth plan let your provider know let your nurses know make sure the staff knows and they will take care of it the other thing that i would put um, my first birth plan, I didn't really think about this and I didn't really know what to put because I didn't know what to expect. But I would put postpartum, anything about postpartum. And so I'll give you guys a few things that I put. I only put like five things because honestly, postpartum, you know, they do care for you and things like that. And it really depends on your labor, like how your postpartum is going to go. But I did put a few things that are important to me and that I want. So I just said um, that we request a private postpartum room. We did have a private postpartum room with our first daughter, um, but I'm just putting it in the birth plan just so they're aware. Um, I said that my support person, my husband, will be staying with me. So check your hospital's um, rules about your partner staying with you because sometimes if you don't have a private room, they might not allow that and kind of decide with you and your partner what you want. Uh, and I said that I request that baby girl stay with us in our room and not go to the nursery and only be taken from us from tests. So you do have the option now in hospitals to either have your baby and keep them in the room with you and you and your partner or whoever takes care of them. The nurses can also help you take care of them or you can send them to the nursery and you can kind of rest. So it's up to you and your partner. Um, my other tip for writing your birth plan is make sure that you as the pregnant person is the one writing the birth plan and having control over like what you want in your labor because it is your labor however talk to your partner make sure you go over everything with your partner because there are things in here that are specific to like if certain things happen and you want the person who's going to be with you in that room to know what your wants and needs are especially in case of emergency because if you let's say are unconscious or in an emergent situation and they have to speak for you you want them to know what you wanted um so whether or not you're going to actually write out a birth plan even if you're not going to write out a birth plan um i would just have that conversation as my support with my support person and with my care team so even if you don't have a written out birth plan i would definitely definitely have a conversation about what is important to you and what your wishes are and in case of this emergency this is what i would want with your birth team but also with your support person so that everyone's on the same page and everyone knows your wishes also my other tip is to be flexible even though we write a birth plan and it does give it give us power and empowerment and a voice in our labor and those are very important things labor a lot of things can happen in labor and things can change so even though this is maybe what you want Things can change and you need to be flexible you want to advocate for yourself for things that you don't want at the same time in case of emergency you want to be flexible for example if the doctor comes and says listen do you want an epidural and you don't want an epidural and you feel like they might be pressuring you just because maybe they don't want to hear you screaming or something you can keep refusing the epidural however if the doctor comes and says, hey, I see that you're getting maternal exhaustion, it's a risk if you don't get the epidural to get some rest, that X, Y, Z can happen, you might want to be flexible. You want to educate yourself on the risk, not scare yourself. You want to be educated but not afraid because you want your labor to be very empowering. Writing a birth plan or even talking about a birth plan or even just having the idea in your head is going to make your labor more powerful for you and empowering for you and the baby and i believe it just makes it more successful because it allows you to know what you wanted but you have to allow for flexibility in medicine because emergencies happen and things change so those are my tips those are the things i would say for your birth plan I hope this helped anybody 
who um, is pregnant or planning to get pregnant or soon to give birth. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below. Um, I will link like a simple template I think that I use with my first daughter. And like I said, I just did bullet points this time, but I will link it all below and I will link the video of our birth story so you can see kind of what my birth plan was with my first daughter and what ended up happening. So you can kind of see what I mean by flexibility, but still advocating for yourself. And as always, I hope this helped anybody who needed it. I'll see you guys next week.